What I like about London is that the escalators here have up to six flat stairs, which is lovely when you're traveling and you have to bring your suitcase along. Since my Airbnb was in West London, I decided that I'd spend my first day in the city exploring the west side. Going up north of West London in the borough of Kensington and Chelsea, you may visit the Portobello Green Market on the Portobello Road, well known as the leading vintage fashion and antiques market. In the evening or at the weekend, people will also gather here for public events. Across from the Portobello Green Market is the Auckland Village, a multicultural village that's open at the weekend where they play music and sell food from all around the world. I visited London on a weekday, so unfortunately it was closed. Definitely check your calendar first. So I actually forgot what this place is, but it's a park within the Portobello Green Market area. Um, spring hasn't fully arrived yet in London, so all the trees are, you know. Down the Portobello Road, you will arrive at the intersection with the Lancaster Road, the most colourful road in the neighbourhood. It is indeed colourful, considering the fact that each house here is painted its own colour that has nothing to do with the one next to them. So, while on the Lancaster Road, the colourful road, I just bumped into this Vietnamese shop, I don't know, whatever they're selling for. If you keep going down the Portobello Road, on the opposite direction with the Portobello Green Market, you will arrive at the Portobello Road Market, which essentially also sells vintage stuffs and even groceries. I had fish and chips for my lunch at the fish house Notting Hill. I loved the fish, but the chips didn't live up to my expectation. 3 over 5. On the way to Chelsea, I came across the Brompton Cemetery, a part of the Royal Parks which is now open to the public as a public dog walk trail. It wasn't part of my plan to visit this place, but it was quite captivating that I had to walk in. I'm here at the Stamford Bridge, not a fan of Chelsea, but I was visiting West London anyway, so I thought I might as well just visit Chelsea Home Stadium. I didn't go inside because I didn't buy any tour ticket, but no one forbids you from wandering around the stadium. Clearly, Chelsea is the luxurious neighbourhood in London. It's not even spring yet and I'm already finding it beautiful. Imagine when the flowers blossom. Welcome to Sloan Square, a small square on the boundaries of Chelsea and Belgravia, lying in the well of Metropolis. Apparently, Sloan Square is surrounded by numbers of high-end brand stores, definitely to go for shopping holics. Here at Sloan Square, you will see the Venus Fountain, the War Memorial with the Royal Court Theatre right behind, and other random stops. There goes the High Park. The largest of the four royal parks lies in Westminster, West London. You can see multiple fountains and statues here at the Hyde Park, for example, this boy and dolphin fountain, the Achilles statue, the Peter Pan statue with a mini interactive experience, hopping on a call with the free-spirited boy in well, Neverland. The only thing is, I know for a fact that no one's ever been quick enough to catch me. So how's he gone and got a picture? From the High Park, you can directly access the Kensington Gardens as the entrances are merged together. So here is the Italian Garden which lies within the Kensington Gardens. One thing though, make sure you take your Wii before visiting the High Park as you'll have to pay 20 pence to use the toilet here. Here I am at the Kensington Palace, the official London residence of the Royal Highness, Prince and Princess of Wales and their children. It is however currently closed until April to prepare for the Crown to Couture exhibition. In front of the Kensington Palace, there is a huge lake called the Rao Pond, created 300 years ago that is a home to numerous swans and geese. I am now standing on the Serpentine Bridge. As you may know, the Serpentine Lake flows from High Park to the Kensington Gardens, where the part of it in Kensington Gardens is called the Long Water. Around the Serenity, there are plaques that mark the names of the people who made the donations to maintain the parks. That night I had picking duck for dinner at Four Seasons. Great dish, good service, got a queue for a bit but all good. 9 over 10 in my opinion. The next day. 
I spent the next two days in central London, starting from taking a tube in the morning to travel to the Ivy Kensington to get a full English breakfast. The ambience at this restaurant is really good, nice service too, and the breakfast, oh holy moly, I don't normally have one and it's this much? I highly doubt if the English people could actually consume this full meal every morning. I could only finish half, but the quality was good, 8 over 10 for me. After finishing my breakfast, I quickly moved to the Buckingham Palace area to observe the changing of the guards. On the way there, I walked past the St. James's Park Lake. I arrived at the Friary Court where the guards first dispatched. Some facts though, the change of guards take place every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10.30am and last for about an hour. The guards march from the Friary Court to the Buckingham Palace for about 15 minutes. If you look at the guards' hats, those with blue plumes are Irish guards, whereas those with red plumes are Coldstream. Scots don't have any plumes on their hats. The order of the play also depends on the guards' royal hierarchy. Before dispatching, around two guards will also be walking back and forth to check if there was any imposter hiding behind the windows. The guards are now marching into the Buckingham Palace. They actually march much faster than you think, at least for me who has a short leg crisis. I had to run along to catch up with them. I must say though, either you follow my way and wait at the Friary Court for the first dispatch or you come to the Buckingham Palace super early in the morning because otherwise all you can see here would be the tourists' heads. The new guards dispatch from the Wellington Barracks around 10.50am and march their ways into the Buckingham Palace. Honestly, I'm not sure what score the band was playing for these ceremonies but I swear to god, at some point I heard the Wiccans blinding lights and a piece by Mozart being played. Afterwards, I went to the Trafalgar Square. I thought it was close by because I believe Google said Buckingham had an outlook to the Trafalgar Square, but no, I still had to take a tube there. Then I had a quick lunch at the Sherlock Holmes Bar, which is 10 minute walk from the Trafalgar Square. The decorations is spot on. I'm good with the BBQ chicken wings since I'm still full from the breakfast. Then I walked past the Golden Jubilee Bridge to the Linen Eye Ride. I bought a combo ticket of £60 to visit the London Eye, the Aquarium and the Madame Tussauds. The ride itself lasts around 30 minutes but the queue takes around 15 minutes even if you have already booked the time slot. Here is a view of London from the London Eye. Honestly, I don't think the London Eye really worth £20 but it's a London tourism experience, isn't it? The Sea Life Aquarium London is right next to the London Eye. Once again, the queue is relatively long of roughly 20 minutes even if you already booked the ticket. There are three floors in the aquarium with various types of sea inhabitants and it's really easy to navigate around. If you really are into the sea, you can spend like 90 minutes here. I personally was good to go after 60 minutes. Uh, it was worth the money though, I'm sure. They also have a few interactive games for you to enjoy like virtual reality, catching starfishes, etc. or this game.
I went all the way to Borough Market, where they have hundreds of booths selling food from all around the world. Be mindful though that the market is closed by 5pm every day, so you'd better get there early enough. Later in the day, I went to visit the Tower Bridge, which makes its way straight to the Tower of London. There is a £9.12 entrance ticket to go into the bridge though. You will get to learn about the history of the bridge, walk on this unforgettable walkway with glass floors, though I'm scared of heights so I can't really enjoy that, and get to see the iconic panoramic views of London from inside the bridge. Going down the engine room, you will learn how the bridge is operated, Get to act as a bridge operator and learn about the people that helped build the bridge. Going past the Tower Bridge, I carried on on the Jubilee Walkway to visit the Tower of London. I didn't go inside the tower because the ticket costed £30, which I found quite hectic, but wandering around is already good enough. The next morning. The Wax Museum Madame Tussauds is the last missing piece to my central London exploration. It'd be best if you tag someone along to photograph the tourist attractions like this to help you get some shots more easily. Right off the bat is the Hollywood red carpet where you'll see Zendaya, The Rock, Ed Sheeran, Ariana Grande, Queen Bee, etc. I for sure took a bunch of photos with them. You should definitely spare around 2 hours to snap every shot at the Madame Tussauds. Not gonna lie, some of these scary rooms really scared the heck out of me. They even hired an actor to play around with us visitors. After surviving these scary rooms, you may hop on these London taxis to travel around the wax city of London. We all know how relevant Marvel Universe is, so of course Madame Tussauds London has a whole floor dedicated to all the Marvel characters. And they also have a 4DX show for the Marvel Hall of Heroes with 3D screens and motion seats. And another floor for the Star Wars fans. You know how they say London's weather is just gloomy, cloudy or rainy? Well, apparently, it was incredibly sunny the last day I was in London. Beautiful enough for me to take some photos of the Sherlock Holmes' Baker Street. Before hopping on a coach to Manchester, I passed by the Victoria Palace Theatre. They were having the Hamilton musical on that day, so there was a long line of people waiting outside to get in. <laughs> 